And welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of Crazes Corner. We have a dynasty trade for candidate show today. So we want to make sure you stay tuned. We've each got one player we're trying to trade for. Uh, but we got Jeff and Will with media with us today. How are we doing, guys? Doing Great. all right, Zach. Ready to it's talk. It's been a while, but we're back. We got some dynasty trade for candidates. Guys, you know, we're trying to add to our team. Maybe their value is a little bit lower than we think is going to be this time next year. Uh, maybe it's a guy that can help you contribute this year to maybe help you win a championship. I'm going to go first here. I got a guy that, you know, performed really well last year. Uh, he's got a new quarterback, new system, and no weapons outside of him in this offense, really, and that's George Pickens with the Pittsburgh Steelers. George Pickens put up 1,140 yards last year on 63 receptions, gave him the highest uh, yards per catch in the NFL. Uh, and that was with Kenny Pickett throwing him the ball, although Russell <laughs> Wilson does, you know, he does tend to suck. Uh, his deep ball was coming pretty good, and he knows how to find his guys in the end zone. You look at his time in Seattle, Tyler Lockett, uh, he was amazing in the red zone. You look at last year, Cord Cortland Sutton had 10 touchdowns. So if you can bring George Pickens up into that 8-9 touchdown range, that's going to be huge uh, for his fantasy value. If he gets more receptions, say he gets into that 70-80 reception range, uh, you know, maybe the, the efficiency comes down a little bit, but he could have, you know, I have him for 71 receptions, 1,242 yards and nine touchdowns. And that makes him a top 10 wide receiver in my projections for this upcoming season. And I think that's realistic. I think we could see uh, him take a step forward. Like I said, he's dealing with Roman Wilson probably as the number two wide receiver in targets. Uh, Van Jefferson, Calvin Austin, Scotty Miller. No one really jumps out at me. Uh, Pat Fryermuth, a tight end, and we know Arthur Smith does love his tight ends, but when Arthur Smith was in uh, Tennessee with A.J. Brown, who was their clear-cut number one, they ran the ball first. A.J. Brown was able to be their number one look when it came to the passing game, and I think that's what George Pickens is going to do for Arthur Smith. I think he's, I think he's established. I think he's a great wide receiver, and I think George Pickens is going to have a much higher value uh, at this time next year, and I think he's going to be a top 10 possibly wide receiver for you. So if you can go out and get him, trade a first-round pick, uh, if you think you're a contending team or maybe you package your worst wide receiver uh, in, in a second or maybe you, you have a better wide receiver and you go get George Pickens plus, I think you should do whatever you can to get George Pickens on your dynasty team. Jeff, you're a Russell Wilson fan. Do you think George Pickens is a good trade for a target? I do. I, I really, really do. I think he's going to uh, hopefully elevate Russ's game this year, uh, having a more athletic um, and just real, I won't say just athletic, just a slippery receiver. That's that's mm. the thing as well. <laughs> he knows how to get open. And then even if he's contested, he knows how to get the ball. And I think it's going to really, really, I think Russ is going to, probably force him the ball as well yep. this season. So, you know, I, I, I can see it. And the the one thing you did say about Russ, the one compliment sort of you gave him <laughs> was that he is really good with the deep ball. And I think yep. that's where Pickens is going to excel. Absolutely. I think Roman Wilson will be their underneath guy, uh, but Pickens can take the top off the defense, even with Kenny Pickett, who's not really good at throwing the ball down the field. Pickens is just a playmaker. As you said, he'll get open, and I think he could be – I don't have him projected for as many touchdowns as Corton Sutton had last year, but I honestly think that that's a realistic expectation if Russell Wilson plays all uh, 17 games this season. Will, what do you think about George Pickens? I, it's a boom or bust for me. It, you could hit, and Russ and the quarterback situation there hits too. Or it could be a freaking disaster. Um, so to me, it's it's a boomer bust, and and I, and I think it's a it's a little bit of a risk though, just because you don't know the long term quarterback situation. So what does that mean to his value, especially if you're doing a dynasty league? Mm. It's not like he's an old guy, right? So yeah. um, I like him. I like potential. I, I trust the organization. Just that, that those reports last week from minicamp were not glowing on either quarterback, and you're kind of like. 
Oh boy, this could be a mess. Yeah, I think he's only 24, uh, so it's great age wise. They can either bring in a quarterback next week. So this is a great organization, so I do believe that they will have something coming for him. And yeah. just the fact that he's really got no one to compete for his sort of targets, I think he should be yeah. a solid uh, addition to your dynasty team. I think he's going to contribute this year, and like we said, he's still young. Jeff, yeah. who's your player you're trying to trade for in dynasty? I think this guy is about to hit another stratosphere pretty soon uh, because I think he's going to get his team – if not to just the um, – um, not to the Super Bowl, at least a, a possible NFC championship, and that's Jordan Love. Uh, what he did last year, uh, especially towards the end of that year, uh, he showed he's for real. I think he's going to make people forget about Aaron Rodgers pretty soon being in Green Bay. <laughs> it's going to be a true love affair, if you will. <laughs> Green Bay. I mean, with all of the weapons that he has, they've got so many receivers. It's ridiculous. Um, and now it seems um, I had liked Aaron Jones, but now it just seems like they have a better run game as well. Um with the uh, kid from USC that they drafted uh, as well as uh, what you call it, came over from the Raiders. Uh, yeah, Jacobs. yeah. Jacobs. So um, I just feel like this dude is, is set uh, to explode. Uh, I think it's going to be, it's going to be really tough between them, the lions, the Niners, that, but I think if the Packers play things right, cover your ears, Will. <laughs> they, they might win that NFC North this year, man. So I, I think he can – he's close to becoming uh, one of the top five QBs in the league. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm going for him. Yeah, I think that the Packers are definitely in contention to win the NFC North. We know that the Vikings are not. It will right. be the Lions or, or the Packers. Mm -hmm. I, I like the fact that he has the weapons around him. I like Christian Watson this year. Jaden Reed was great last year. Uh, Romeo Dobbs is good. Everyone's talking up Wicks. If all these guys are going to perform, and then you have their tight ends as well, uh, that means Jordan Love is going to have to have another great season. Uh, if they can build on what they had last year, uh, take another step forward. Like you said, they brought in a couple more running backs. Hopefully that will help take some of the pressure off, but should hopefully bring up those touchdown numbers. Uh, so I think Jordan Love is a good target if you can acquire him. I know a lot of people who have Jordan Love right now are probably like, I don't know, maybe maybe he's maybe he's not going to be so easy to get. But if you can get Jordan Love on your team, especially in Superflex, he's he's going to be a cornerstone for your dynasty team. Will, what do you think? Hey, NC North is going to be hot this year. Just is. You have three good teams for sure. Uh, Vikings depends on where they are in their development, but division games are always tough in the North. So that'll be interesting in itself. I, I think love it, a lot of expectations at the, after the end of that season last year. Mm -hmm. and, and he has a talent, right? And he has, the organization is good. So um, I, I think your point, Zach, is the bigger question is what's going to take to get him in a dynasty league? Yeah. Or how much are you willing to give up? Like, if you have a young roster and quarterbacks the missing piece, securing a quarterback for the next eight, 10 seasons, you, and you're going to be drafting near the end of the, end of the first round, but you're going to give you're going to mortgage a lot. It's not going to be cheap because owners right now are not going to give love away. Um, maybe if the contract situation gets contentious in green Bay and there's a, like, there's a feeling of a rift that could cause a problem. You might be able to swoop in and get them a little less, but I, I can't imagine what the ask right now is for Jordan Love. Yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what it would be, but it would definitely be a bit. Uh, but I, I do think, you know, he's going to be worth it. As you said, if there's your young team and you need another young quarterback, uh, I think Jordan Love's a great guy to go get. Uh, and he's tied to young, young talent around him. He's got a good coaching staff and a good organization. So definitely a good player to go and get. George Pickens, I brought him up because I, I don't think you're paying – Top wide right. receiver price to go get him uh, at the moment, and that's why I think he's a little bit of a trade for candidate. I think kind of similar to the way you view your player, Will. Uh, so who who do you want to trade for in dynasty leagues? Right. Um, now? 
Isaiah Pacheco running back with the Chiefs mm-hmm. because I think he's undervalued right now. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of discussion around the team on and off the field. And there's a lot of focus, but it's really just to me, it's really just kind of him at running back. And yep. you know, I I read in mini camp they were using him in the slot. Um, so you know, if he's on if he's a at least a third down back, if not first, second, third down, and he's got position flexibility and he's gonna get touches, I think he gets eight to ten touches a game. Um, and even if they're short, it's you know, half a point or a point per reception. And and I think owners might be a little leery. I, there's a, I, I think the last couple of years with the Chiefs, if you have Chief players and you don't have Mahomes, you're probably reevaluating those Chief players right now. Like, yeah. are you going to get out now? Can you get something for them based on – you're just not sure, right? You, you just don't know what's going on with the, um, with the team. Not in a bad way, but you just don't know where the where the production is going to go. You know, like same with rice. Like you don't know what's going to go on with rice. Could you get rice cheap? And I just think in all that chaos that maybe you might be able to find an owner that's like, oh, I'll give Pacheco away, and it might it might be the difference that gives you two or three year run. I am going to say I'm a little leery of giving up a lot for any running back, but if I was going to go try to go get a running back, I think he's undervalued, and you can go get him. Yeah, I like Pacheco. I think if you're trying to compete this year, uh, he's definitely a piece you can go add uh, because I don't think he's going to cost too much because, as he said, seventh-round pick. Uh, he'll be up for mm-hmm. a new contract soon. Will he be with Kansas City? Will he not be? Yeah. Uh, I liked for Pacheco's fantasy value what the Kansas City Chiefs did this offseason at running back, and that was re-sign Clyde Edwards-Alaire yeah. uh, for a super cheap deal. So now Pacheco is the guy. He's going to get yeah. all the goal line work. He had a touchdown in all but one of their playoff games last season. They really started to rely on him. Yeah. Uh, they brought in some new passing weapons from Mahomes, so that's kind of where everyone's been looking uh, at this yeah. year. But if Pacheco gets you know, a few more touches this year than he had last year, he could be the first Chiefs running back uh, in a while to get that 1,000-yard season. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think he's going to – possibly be on the back of 10 plus uh touchdowns uh, so yeah. if you can do that at the running back position i think you'll be pretty good and consistent so if you can get him for a cheaper price i'm definitely in jeff what do you think about Patricia? you know the only thing um they brought in a kid uh this year and i'm keeping an eye on him and that's imani bailey because you were mentioning the goal line stuff this kid is a bowling ball and Andy Reid likes these types of kids. And I'm looking at with uh, McKinnon gone, they kind of clean house. I think mm-hmm. they they kept um, uh, C, what is the name? C- C-H. Yeah, C-E-H. Yeah. They kept him around just because I think they're still saving face on that, drafting him in the <laughs> first round. Uh, but I think he's going to be relegated down the, the pack. I think this kid mm-hmm. is one of those guys that – the Chiefs always seem to get like late and then he ends up playing a lot, you know, where it's almost like a Spencer Ware, you know, where they always get these two guys. So now they'll split work between him and Pacheco. I, I And also they got the guy from uh, the, the rugby player as well, again, playing in the slot, playing in the backfield. So, I mean, that's, that's the only thing I think you can get him fairly at a decent price, but, I'm also looking at these I'm, – I'm waiting to see how Andy Reid is going to use these other guys that he brings in. Yeah, I think Pacheco's safe because, you know, he, they don't have to worry about the turnovers. Uh, he's been pretty good at keeping the ball. He's just been really good at getting them positive plays when they need it. I think with an aging Kelsey and an unproven wide receiver core that Pacheco's yeah. the guy that they're going to have to lean on more. Uh, if he can yeah. get that PPR uh, out of the backfield, uh, yeah. I think that'll be good. If Maybe he loses a couple touchdowns. Uh, touches Mm -hmm. in the red zone, but I think he proved last year he's a great red zone running back, and if they already trust him with the ball, unless they're spelling him because he just had a long run to get them down there, uh, I think he can he can pass block. He should be on the field for majority of the time. So I think that I think those are three really good trade four candidates we just brought up there. Uh, We will have another show for trade away candidates. If you haven't watched that one, you can go check that out. Uh, If you've already watched that one, thank you for coming and watching this one as well. Ah. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, We will see you in the next show. Uh, Hope you enjoyed. A guy that 